Today's movie opens with a rainy day in 1920. Set in the campus of Trinity College in Cambridge, England, Professor G. H. Hardy is seen pondering and talking to himself about an Indian man named Ramanujan. He considers the connection he shares with him as the most plutonic love of his life. The scene then shifts to Madras, India in 1944, where Ramanujan is sitting on the floor of a temple, attempting to solve a mathematical problem. He's seen struggling to get a job due to his lack of a degree, which leaves him feeling sad and heartbroken. Ramanujan knows that he could not live with his new wife until he finds a job to support her. The next day, Ramanujan shows his mathematical research to his potential employer and luckily secures a job with the condition that he must spend his evenings teaching Narayana the research he's written. Narayana introduces Ramanujan to his British boss, Sir Francis, who initially does not approve of the new employee's appearance, but ultimately becomes convinced to make Ramanujan a clerk in the accounting department. Ramanujan moves with his wife and mother to their new house and continues working with Narayana until the evening. They discuss finding someone who can truly understand Ramanujan's ideas and formulas. Narayana suggests that they find somebody outside of India for this purpose. While Ramanujan's wife, Janaki, is alone and unable to sleep, she goes to his workplace to return home with him. The next day, Ramanujan tells his mother, Ama, that he's thinking about finding somebody outside of India to share his ideas with. But his mom disagrees due to their Brahmin background, which forbids them from crossing the sea. On the other side, Narayana believes that they must publish Ramanujan's work to show the British their potential. Sir Francis suggests three people in England who can help manage it, specifically mentioning Professor Hardy from Trinity College. In England, Professor Hardy receives a letter from an Indian clerk claiming to explain the negative values of the gamma function, including the professor's assertions on it. Initially thinking that it's from his colleague, Professor Littlewood, he soon discovers that it's actually a real letter from a clerk in India. He is stunned by the calculations, and he sends back a letter inviting Ramanujan to Trinity College. As he prepares for his journey, Ramanujan cuts his hair and promises Janaki that he will take her as soon as he is able to. He says his farewells to his loved ones and sets out on his journey. Upon arriving at Trinity College, Ramanujan is welcomed by Professor Littlewood and is astounded by the grandeur of the building and surroundings. Professor Hardy greets him and arranges their first meeting to start their work as soon as possible. The next morning, Ramanujan rushes to Hardy's office to make it on time. Hardy and Littlewood greet him and inform him that despite his desire to publish his works, he must first attend some lectures and learn how to prepare formal proofs of his theorem. Ramanujan astounds both professors by presenting his latest discovery, a function that represents the number of prime numbers less than x in an infinite series. They are taken aback as they believe that this problem would take a lifetime to solve. During dinner, Ramanujan sits with an Indian student and his friend in the hall. They tell him that word is out on his prime number theory and everyone is aware of it. They also chat about Professor Hardy. Ramanujan excuses himself from the dinner table as he is a vegetarian and the diner he's being served is unsuitable for him. The following morning, Ramanujan begins his lecture class. While other students take notes, he just sits and watches the teacher. Annoyed by his behavior, the teacher asks him to solve an equation. Ramanujan solves solves the problem even though the teacher has not completed the proofs on how to solve it. When the class ends, the lecturer is furious and warns Ramanujan not to behave in such a manner again, telling him that he does not belong there. Ramanujan is puzzled as to why they waste time trying to find proofs to formulas. Hardy explains that if they want to challenge bigger mathematicians, their work must be beyond doubt. He then takes him to the Wren Library of Cambridge, where he believes their legacy must be left after they've gone. Overjoyed, Ramanujan smiles after receiving a letter from his wife, who tells him that she misses him every day and is eager waiting for his letters. And Ramanujan discovers a new solution for a partition theory and shows it to Hardy. But Hardy informs him that it's useless unless he can provide proofs, and he could not help and publish his works unless Ramanujan brings proofs with all the formulas that he's come up with. One night, Ramanujan gives Hardy the proof that he's been working on. The next day, Professor Hardy marks his mistakes and asks him to do it again. 
and despite thinking that he should wait for some time, Professor Hardy changes his mind and gives Ramanujan the published version of one of his works with his additional proofs. Ramanujan runs with joy upon seeing his papers. Meanwhile, in India, news of Ramanujan's paper being published reaches his wife, who misses him terribly and writes him a letter. However, instead of posting it, Ama, his mother, hides the letter. As war breaks out in Belgium, Professor Littlewood is summoned by the war office to assist them in ballistics. One morning, Ramanujan goes out to buy vegetables, but due to the war, there weren't a lot available. He also goes to the post office, but there's no letter. While returning to his room from the post office, three British men who recognize him follow him and beat him up badly. They're very angry that they're being sent off to war while he's living in luxury in their own country. He returns to his room, but he has nothing to eat as the three men have ruined the vegetables he'd purchased. In the next scene, we witness Professor Hardy's frustration as the UDC meeting he has planned is cancelled by the college due to political interference from some lecturers. As World War I commences to Belgium, Professor Littlewood gets set to go to the war. He writes to Hardy, advising him to ensure that Ramanujan's work is significant. He also mentions that the prime theorem of Ramanujan is incorrect and needs to be corrected before publication. Hardy then confronts Ramanujan and informs him of the error in the theorem. He urges Ramanujan to work on the proofs and avoid future mistakes. Ramanujan, in turn, loses his temper and berates Hardy for not understanding the sacrifices he had to make to be there. He reminds Hardy that he left his wife behind in India, and then he eventually calms down and works on the proofs. After he was done, he slides them under the door of Hardy's room, and the following day, Hardy expresses his appreciation for Ramanujan's work. At a student's funeral, Professor Hardy discusses his concerns about Ramanujan's behavior with his colleague, Bertrand Russell. Hardy is determined to prove Ramanujan's theorem on partitions and consults Major McMahon, the leader in combinatronics at the university. Despite Major McMahon's skepticism, Ramanujan remains confident that he will solve of the partition problem. Hardy and Major McMahon put Ramanujan to the task of finding the partition of 200. The next day, Major McMahon is stunned by Ramanujan's result of the partition problem. Suddenly, Ramanujan begins to cough violently, which signals the beginning of his illness. The coughing continues in the next days, and Ramanujan is in unbearable pain, forcing him to go to the hospital. On their way out, Ramanujan and his friend Chandra narrowly escape a German Zeppelin bombing, but some people die. Back in India, Janaki weeps over Ramanujan's notes written on the floor of the temple. She is heartbroken believing that Ramanujan has forgotten her. Meanwhile, Professor Hardy and Ramanujan continue to make progress on the partition problem. Hardy informs Ramanujan that he has nominated him for a fellowship, which makes him very happy, but that happiness is short-lived as the fellowship is denied. And Ramanujan's condition worsens day by day, and one night he couldn't sleep due to a severe cough. He starts coughing up blood and hallucinates numbers on his hands, walking unsteadily until he falls into a tent set up in the campus for injured soldiers. The doctors inform Ramanujan that his condition has deteriorated significantly and advise him to put his affairs in order. Upon hearing this, Ramanujan loses all hope and goes to a railway attempting to jump in front of a moving train. Luckily, the conductor saves him and ends up in a hospital. When Hardy visits him in the hospital, he learns about Ramanujan's TB. TB for tuberculosis, that is. Despite his worsening condition, all Ramanujan can think about is Janaki, who he believes has forgotten him. One day, while chatting with Hardy, Ramanujan shares his creative process with him. He explains how the god Namagiri reveals formulas to him through his dreams and prayers, adding that equations only make sense to him if they express a divine thought. And being an atheist, Hardy finds it difficult to accept this belief. As they part ways, Hardy hands Ramanujan a letter from Yanaki. The letter informs him that she's left for her brother's house as she thinks he's forgotten her. Finally, Ramanujan solves the complex mathematical problem and provides proof, a significant breakthrough for the mathematics community. 
This accomplishment prompts Hardy to push for Ramanujan's fellowship, beginning with a letter to Professor Littlewood seeking for his assistance. Hardy presents Ramanujan's achievements and contributions to the Royal Fellowship members, delivering a moving and inspiring speech. As a result, Ramanujan is granted a fellowship of the Royal Society. Hardy sends him a telegram congratulating him, and in the next scene, Janaki reads a letter from Ramanujan and rushes to the bedroom to search for the letters that were hidden by Amma. She finds them, but but Amma explains she hid them to prevent Janaki from leaving, knowing that Ramanujan would not return if she asked him to. Ramanujan receives his fellowship from Trinity College, and after completing it, he decides to return to India. As he and Hardy prepare to say their goodbyes, Hardy complains about the dull number of the cab that he arrived in, which is 1729. However, Ramanujan explains that 1729 is special because it's the smallest number that can be expressed as the sum of two cubes in two different ways. This number is now known as the Ramanujan number. A year later, Hardy receives a letter from India informing him of Ramanujan's death. He becomes deeply saddened by the news, and in the next scene, Hardy presents a speech about Ramanujan to his colleagues while Janaki grieves her husband's passing in India. The movie then shows texts about the rediscovery of Ramanujan's lost notebook in 1976. The formulas in it are now used to understand the behavior of black holes. Finally, the movie concludes with a series of real pictures of the people involved in the story and their futures. It's revealed that Ramanujan died at the age of 32 due to the illness, and Janaki never remarried following Indian custom. Hardy and Littlewood continued their collaboration for the rest of their lives, and the remarkable achievements of Ramanujan and Professor Hardy has inspired and influenced generations of mathematicians, leaving a great mark on the world of mathematics. And that is it for our recap today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and also if you're from India and I butchered any of the Indian names, leave me a comment, I'll do better next time, yeah. And I promise to see you guys on my next recap, bye.